Hi, I'm pro saxophonist Jamie Anderson and this is Get Your Sax Together. This video is part one of my complete guide to music theory and harmony for absolute beginners of any instrument. So if you've ever wondered what's a key, what's a chord, what's a scale, then stay tuned because in this video I'm going to take you from zero to harmonic hero in no time. So these four videos are going to form a complete course that is going to take you from absolute beginner to advanced harmony that you can really apply when you want to improvise on sax. Now there's a fantastic free PDF worksheet that you will find linked down in the description below so don't forget to go and pick that up and if you're enjoying the lessons please do subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified of when new videos come out. Right, I'm going to jump behind the computer screen for the lesson so I'll see you there. Okay, welcome from behind the screen. Okay, when I said I'm going to take you from zero to hero, I mean from absolute zero. Now, I've already covered how to read actual notated music from scratch, and you can find that linked video in the card above. So we're going to assume that you've got those basics in place. If not, go ahead and watch that video now. Okay, let's start from the beginning. First of all, there was an infinite ball of mass containing every particle in the universe. Ah, uh, right, okay, maybe not that far back. Let's just get to the part where Earth is formed and Homo sapiens have evolved. So, from the first humans to Ariana Grande, all music is basically just organised sound. One way or another, all musical devices end up rapidly squashing air molecules to make them oscillate at different frequencies, producing higher or lower sounds. The molecules from the air all bump into each other, transferring the sound wave through the air until those sound waves hit your eardrum, where they're decoded by your brain. Pretty cool. That's why in space, by the way, where there's no air, there's no sound, as there's no stuff, so to speak, for the sound wave to travel through. Now, a frequency twice as fast will produce the same note, but an octave higher, like this. So there's a C on the piano. If you double the frequency, you get another C, but an octave higher. Double the frequency again, and you get the C above, and so on. This is just basic physics, and if you've ever used a bull roarer or blown down a tube or a flute to get a sound, you can hear these harmonics, as they're called, for yourself. And a higher tone, and a higher tone, and a higher tone, and yet a higher tone. As harmonics are naturally occurring phenomena, most music harmony is based on them. Now, we've got notes an octave apart based on the physics of sound. The question is now how to subdivide these octaves into smaller chunks that we can compose with. And oddly, this is not the same everywhere in the world. For example, in Indonesian gamelan music, they evenly divide the octave into either five or seven equal parts, which sound unusual to our Western ears. This is what it sounds like. <laughs> However, in standard Western music, the octave is divided into 12 equal parts. This means there are only 12 individual pitches or notes. So, all the music you've ever heard, ever, anywhere, as long as it's in the West, has basically been rearrangements of these 12 notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 10, 11, 12, and then we get back the note an octave higher. Now it's time to introduce our secret weapon learning tool, which is the piano keyboard. Now everyone knows what a piano keyboard looked like. However, if you're unfamiliar, if you look carefully at the keyboard and you don't know about a piano keyboard, the black and white keys are arranged in a repeating pattern with alternating clusters of two and three black notes. And then the pattern restarts every, you guessed it, 12 notes. So when we look at a piano, you can imagine it as the same sequence of 12 black and white notes, like that, which are copy and pasted across different octaves to give the full 88 notes that you see in a piano. Now if I do the same cluster of 12 notes there up an octave, then it would take up that space on the keyboard and so on. So you can see the piano is simply 12 notes spread out across different octaves. 
Music is organized sound, and sound waves produce the same note when the frequency is doubled. So there's a C, you double the frequency, it's an octave higher. Or halved, so there's a C, and you half the frequency, and it's an octave lower. These are called octaves, and in Western music, we divide these octaves into 12 different subdivisions, giving us 12 different notes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then we're back to the note, an octave higher. Great, now we start getting into some dicey territory, which is naming the notes. So, how about this? We just give each note a number from 1 to 12, and we're sorted, right? Wrong. That would be a bit too easy, really, wouldn't it? Um, okay, I hear you say, well, I've heard people talk about letters, E major and all that, so, my bad, we must give the note names letters instead, right? A to L for the 12 notes. No. <laughs> well, well, kind of. We actually use the letters A to G, and yes, you haven't done your maths wrong, that's only seven letters. So, let's unpack this and sort it out. To get our heads around this bit, we have to back up a little bit and explore a thing called a scale. In basic terms, a scale is a series of consecutive notes played one after the other, going up and down like this. That was a C major scale. Before anyone had thought about music theory or invented a 12-note piano, we used our voices and simple stringed and flute-type blown instruments, and it was discovered that certain sequences of notes sounded good. What sounded harmonious was different in different parts of the world, and even within different pieces of music within each culture. These scales were predominantly derived from naturally occurring harmonics found within nature. So, a few hundred thousand years of humans dancing, chanting, hunting, celebrating, mourning, drug-taking, praying, telling stories, performing music and entertaining. Later, we ended up with some kind of consensus in Western music, and that became the series of major and minor scales that we all now use. And after that, we have worked out what it was in theory and how to write it down. So, what are these scales, and how do we work them out? Well, for now, to keep it simple, let's just say all scales span an octave and contain seven different notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, for example. Or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, going back to our keyboard and our 12 notes for a moment, let's cover a bit of jargon which will help us out with scales. The smallest jump we can do on the piano keyboard from one note to another is called a semitone. A semitone is the gap, or interval as it's called, from one note to the adjacent note on the piano, whether it be black or white. So you can move from this note to this note, that's a semitone, or this note to this note, it's a semitone, or that note to that note, it's a semitone. It's the closest note, white or black, to the next one is a semitone. Now, if you jump two of those semitones instead, that interval is known as a tone. A tone is two semitones. So from there to there is a tone. From there to there is a tone. So that is a tone. That to that is a tone because it's two semitones away. So, back to scales then. The seven notes of major scales go up in a series of intervals. Some of them are semitones, and some of them are tones. Now, remember, on a piano, it doesn't matter if a key is white or black, the one next to it is a semitone away, and the key two semitones away is called a tone. So, let's start with a major scale, and that will clear up this thing about note names for you at the same time. So, we start on C. Now, the intervals of a major scale, we go up, we do a tone, a tone, a semitone, a tone, a tone, a tone, and a semitone, taking us back to C again, but the C, the octave higher, like this. So, we start on C, we go up two semitones, which is a tone, then we go up a tone again, a semitone this time, up a tone, up a tone, up a tone, and finally, the last interval is a semitone, taking us back to C. This is the scale taught by Maria in the Doe Deer song from The Sound of Music. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, di, do, so, do. In fact, sometimes music theory is taught based on this Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, T, 
Tito system or the Solfej system, as it's called, but we're not going to go into it at this point. But that is the same scale. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. So, as you may have noticed, a C major scale only uses the white notes on the piano. And here we finally have our answer to note names. Only the white keys on the piano have note names, not every key. And it's because the note names were assigned based on that seven note scale. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And yes, in a typically confusing way, the letters don't start with A on the C, <laughs> but they start on C. So let's have a quick recap then. Most music is organized using ascending steps of notes called scales. The core scale of Western music has seven notes and is called a major scale. The main note names are assigned to each note of this scale and the ascending intervals between adjacent notes in this scale are tone, tone, semitone, Tone, 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 semitone gives you the intervals or the pattern, the code of a major scale. Ha! But! What if you want to start a major scale on a different note, not C? And those tones and semitones give you black notes. What do you call those notes when there's only seven note names and 12 notes? This is a very good question. And the answer lies with those flats and sharps on the piano, the black notes. A flat, which looks like a weird lowercase b, can be added after a note name. And it means that the flat is now a semitone beneath the note letter. So this note here is a b. Now this note here, a semitone beneath, is called a b flat. However, just to be confusing, as usual, when you write the accidentals, as they're called, the flats and sharps are called accidentals, when you write them in the music notation like this, the flat comes before the note, but the way you say it is actually B flat. A sharp, which looks a bit like a hashtag, not to be confused with hashtags, can be added after a note name, and it means that the note is now one semitone above the note letter. So this note is an A, and this note, which is a semitone higher on the black note, is called an A sharp. As it's an A that has been sharpened or raised by one semitone. So A, semitone higher is A sharp. There's the B, and a semitone lower is B flat. Now, the geniuses among you may have noticed that I played the same note in these two examples, B flat and A sharp. And this proves an important point. The same note can be described in different ways. G sharp here is the same as A flat. F sharp is the same as G flat. And yes, folks, as twisted as it sounds, C is the same as B sharp. And E is the same as F flat. Although you probably won't see these potentially confusing ones much until you're much more advanced. Okay, goody goody gumdrops. Hopefully you're still with me. Let's have a lightning recap just to make sure. In the beginning, there was a big bang of infinite energy and the universe was created. The earth formed, life began, humans appeared, and we started making sounds with stuff. We got much better at making sounds with better stuff. Those organized sounds are called music. Most Western music is constructed using seven notes that we thought sounded good. When played in order, those good sounding notes make a thing called a scale. The seven notes of a scale give us the seven note name letters. Also, the smallest interval in music is called a semitone. Going up in adjacent semitone steps, there are 12 different individual pitches in music in each octave. Two semitones make an interval of a tone. A major scale, you know, the one that people worked out sounded pretty good before enough followers on Instagram told them it was good, is made up of various intervals of tones and semitones. And finally, using flats and sharps, we can describe those orphan black notes on the piano that don't have their own note names. Boom! Okay, here's a real quickie to clear up while we're on a roll. What's a chord? Well, a chord is just two or more different notes played at once. For example, that C and E makes up a chord. It doesn't matter what the notes are, as long as they're not the same note in a different octave, like this. That's a unison C, that's not a chord. But that is a chord. 
Let's do another chord. I don't know. These are all chords, even if it's just two notes or 20 notes, and they're different notes, that is called a chord. Now, we're going to go into much more detail about chords in part two, so that's all to look forward to, so don't worry about that for the moment. Now, finally for this session, what the hell is a key? Yes, a piano has keys, a saxophone has keys, you use a key to get into your house, a map has a key to tell you what different symbols mean, blah, blah, blah. But we're talking about music theory here. And in this context, the key of a piece of music tells you the home note, the root note of the piece, the note that the melody finishes on and you relax and go, ah, finally, we're home. Chewy. We're home. So as there are 12 different pitches, there are 12 different keys. Now, remember I said how a major scale, or any scale for that matter, has a fixed set of semitone and tone intervals to make up the seven notes? Well, that holds true for every key. For example, let's take the key of D major and go up the major scale of that key. Remember the intervals of the major scale are tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. That gives us the root D, we go up a tone to E, up another tone, which gives us F sharp, semitone gives us G, a tone gives us A, another tone gives us B, another tone gives us C sharp, and finally, the final semitone takes us back to our home key of D. So in this key, we need to use an F sharp and a C sharp to keep the correct pattern going for the major scale. Another way of saying this is to say that D major has two sharps, F sharp and the C sharp, which are on the white notes, which keep the correct pattern of the major scale. So D major uses two sharps. The musical jargon for that is to say that the key signature of D is two sharps, F sharp and C sharp. Now, when you're writing out a piece of music in the key of D, you write this key signature at the start of every line and it makes every F and every C a sharp for the whole piece. It's basically a way of saving notating loads of sharps in the music the whole time. So, in this example, you can see that I've got the F sharp written there and the C sharp written there. So, if I was writing out this piece of music, I would put in a key signature with two sharps, like D major there. Let's put that at the start of the music and then I don't need to write the F sharp and the C-sharp anymore because they are always F-sharp and C-sharp unless we're told otherwise. So the key signature for D major is two sharps. Now because there are 12 keys, there are 12 different key signatures. Some of them have sharps like these ones here. Some of them has flats like these ones here. So I'm going to do another video called The Cycle of Fifths where I show you all the easy ways of working out what keys have got what sharps and what keys have got what flats. But we don't need to worry about that for the moment. Just for the record, you never mix up sharps and flats within a particular key. It's always a set of flats or a set of sharps, but never a mixture of flats and sharps. So, before anyone thought about it, we worked out that several seven-note scales sounded good. However, if your voice or instrument was higher or lower, you might be starting that scale on a different note. In other words, you'd be doing it in a different key. To keep the interval the same, we have to use flats and sharps, as there's only seven note names and 12 pitches. And it turns out that each key, apart from C, which has no flats or sharps, has one or more flats or sharps to make it sound correct. We can save time when writing out music by having the number of flats or sharps at the start of each line. This is called a key signature. Woo! So, we've covered a lot today. Please feel free, go back, watch the video again to really help it sink in. And remember to get your PDF down in the description below. Uh, I'll be back with part two of the series and we're really going to delve more into chords and the various chord types to demystify that whole scene. In the meantime, please subscribe, ring the bell to be notified of new videos, and I'll see you next time on Get Your Sax Together.